welcome to your biocast. I'm Mrs. Jaeger and I'll be your guide. As always, take detailed notes and don't forget to bring them to class the next day. Take some time right now to get your binder together, a pen, and get ready to learn more about biology. Welcome to your fourth biocast. This video will be about the levels of organization in living things. This is how things are structured from the very smallest of things to the largest of things that we find um, in our environment. Okay, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing something a little different this week. This is not a PowerPoint. It's going to be um, a concept map kind of thing created using Prezi software. So I hope you enjoy it. The smallest structure of living things is the atom. Atom is the basic unit of matter. Everything is made up of atoms, whether it's living, like human being, or non-living, like maybe a coffee mug, all made up of atoms. An example of an atom would be one hydrogen atom. Hydrogen is the uh, simplest element, the lightest element on the periodic table. It's number one, if you remember that from physical science. So we start with atoms, and as we get larger, we head to molecules. A molecule is just a group of atoms bonded together. Um, a good example of that is H2O, which is water. Hopefully you're drinking a lot of that to stay hydrated. So we've got atoms, and atoms are organized into molecules. From molecules, um, we go on to something called an organelle or other cell structures. These are parts of cells. So it's a structure within a cell that has a specific function. A great example of that would be the nucleus. The nucleus is the center of the cell. It contains all the DNA. It's kind of like the control center of the cell. So that would be a good example of an organelle. We're going to learn more about organelles when we get to our unit on cells. So review to yourself what have we gotten. We've, we have um, atoms organized into molecules, organized into organelles or cell structures, and from there we're going to head on to the cell. The cell, as you'll recall, is the smallest unit of living things. Great example would be um, a heart cell in the human body. You also have skin cells, nerve cells, all kinds of cells that perform a specific function in your body. Cells are organized into, what does that look like? A bunch of red slimy stuff. No, it's a tissue. A tissue is a group of cells that performs a similar function. So, for example, you're looking, you were looking at a slide of heart tissue. This heart tissue is made up of a bunch of heart cells that are organized together. Um, and there we've got heart muscle as your example. Now there are a couple different types of tissues, four to be exact. The first type of tissue are four types. The first type is epithelial tissue. Epithelial is a fancy word for skin. Um, epithelial cells cover your body and they also line your internal cavities uh, like your stomach. Um, the function is to protect, secrete, and absorb. Think about how your skin protects you from the elements. It protects you from losing water, it protects your, uh, your, your muscle tissue from damage, um, and it also through your skin secretes uh, sweat and other waste products and also absorbs things like water. Second kind of tissue is connective tissue. We've got a spelling error there. There should not be an M. It's connective tissue. Uh, this is the most abundant and widely used tissue in your body. Most of the tissue in your body is connective tissue. Uh, it functions to provide support and protection to your body. Some examples are blood, bone, cartilage, and fat. The third kind of tissue would be muscle tissue. There are three major types of muscle tissue. The first is your skeletal muscle. This, these are the muscles 
like that one there, that move your bones around. Um, they contract and release and relax to move your, your, uh, your bones, your skeleton. Also, we have cardiac muscle. Cardiac, you'll recognize that word. Cardiac does mean dealing with the heart. And cardiac muscle is found in your heart. It's what we call involuntary because it pumps without us having to think about it. Whereas your skeletal muscles are voluntary. We also have a third type of muscle, and that's smooth muscle. This is what lines your organs um, and the inside of your blood vessels. Okay, so those are three. Here's the fourth one. The fourth type of tissue is nerve tissue. Nerve tissue um, receives stimuli and uh, sends impulses throughout the body, from you know your, all the way from your hands to your brain, or from all over your body to your brain. It's made up of nerve cells called neurons. So a neuron is a nerve cell. Tissues are organized into, you know what that is, that's a heart. A heart is an example of an organ. So tissues are organized into organs. An organ is nothing but a collection of tissues that performs a common function. Function of your heart is to pump blood all over your body. Um, every other organ in your body has a function also. We'll go over those organs at a later date. Organs are organized into what we call organ systems. Just means that uh, it's a group of two or more organs that work together to perform a certain function. For example, your heart is part of your circulatory system whose job it is to uh, pump blood throughout your body. So that's basically it. Try to think of some other organ systems in your body. If you can't think of any, it's okay because we're going to learn them. Organ systems are organized into living things, which are called organisms. Um, an organism is just anything that's living. A plant is an organism. Animals are organisms. People are organisms. A great example is a cheetah, one of my favorites, the fastest land animal. Organisms are part of what we like to call ecosystems. An ecosystem is a community of living things and non-living things that interact. Um, you'll recall that that term living things, are those are biotic factors. And non-living things are, can you remember? abiotic factors. Good. So it's important to remember that the ecosystem is not just the, the living things in an area, but also the non-living things in the environment. Let's take a look at this picture of an environment. This is an African savanna where the cheetah is found. So notice some of the abiotic factors in the environment. We have air, we have um, water in the form of clouds, there are rocks, those dirt, those are all abiotic components of the environment. So those are our levels of organization. See if you can recall them from smallest to largest. Quiz yourself. What comes first? Second? Third? You should be able to mention those. I hope you enjoyed this Prezi presentation, and I will see you for the next Biocast.